Hey friend, Roger Christofferson here again with another album battle. This time we're going to go with Bon Jovi. I know, Bon Jovi. How mainstream can you get? Um, but I have to choose them because these guys, um, when I was young and I first heard that first Bon Jovi soul, or uh, self-titled, actually it was soul, I guess Runaway was soul, but the self-titled album, I played this thing. It's like, it, this has to be one of the albums that for me, I actually wore out. One of the very few I wore out. I wouldn't play the first few songs that I wouldn't play anymore. I had to get another copy of it because that's how much I played this thing when I was first learning and then learning guitar and learning how to write and getting into music. These guys were a huge influence on me, so shoot me if you will, but I don't care. Bon Jovi was a huge influence on me when I was young. Um, the albums I chose are going to be the self-titled one for all the reasons I just spoke of, and Slippery When Wet was my other choice. Um, because, you know, first of all, 7800 Degrees Fahrenheit, I don't know what it is about that album. I never exactly liked it too much. I thought the guitar tone on that album was bad. I know people are probably going to beat me up. It had some good songs on it. I tried to, like, force myself to really get into the album. I couldn't do it. But then when Slippery When Wet came out, of course, it had the huge songs. You know, You Give Love a Bad Name, Living on a Prayer, all that stuff when it first came out was huge and if you were there living it you know what I'm talking about if you weren't you know you weren't around then you're your younger listener right now it's hard to explain what that was like when that was all happening it was huge but um, anyway get back to the self-titled one here <clears throat> we'll start uh, with song number one runaway which was like I just previously mentioned wasn't actually a band song it was Bon Jovi John Bon Jovi was um, working at his uh, it was his uncle, I believe it was, at the power station. You know, he's just uh, working odd jobs there, doing what he had to do, meeting all kinds of famous people, and getting to use studio time on their off time, and getting studio musicians to help him out. You know, whenever he could, asking for favors. Like the guy was a hustler. He was he made himself huge by doing this. I mean, it was he learned a lot. He was smart in what how he went about getting his career going he was a he was a worker I mean you got to give the guy credit the song got you know um, picked up by a radio station and became an extremely highly requested song and that's pretty much how he got his record deal from that song um, the only thing I remember about the, the players on the, this one it wasn't the band yet I remember Tim Pierce was actually when they played the guitar solo on it but I don't remember if I don't think he played the, the rest of the song there was a couple other guys and I'm doing this all by memory, so um, you might want to fact check me on any of this stuff. Um, but it definitely was Tim Pierce on the soul because I actually watched him play it and, tell, and saw the whole video on how he recorded it. But that's all I can remember. Um, so anyway, he had to go get a band together, and you know, probably everybody's heard the story about you know how Richie Sambora went out and saw him play and went backstage and told him that he was going to be the guitar player for him, and that's how he you know came to be in the band. <clears throat> and then the rest of the guys were. Either, um, like David Bryan, I think, was a high school buddy of his. He had the van, so they had to have him in the band because he had the van. And, uh, you know, Tico and uh, Alec were, I think, just other musicians in local bands. So he went out, you know, got the local guys, got to give it to him for that, keeping the, keeping it local and people he knew. And, you know, that's, you know, it's like a band of brothers, I think, when that happens. I know I've been in bands myself, and it's, it, it's like a small family. So yeah, it was a smart way to do things. Um, Song number two on this album was Roulette, which I think is my favorite song on the album. Um, I remember being in a college uh, class that was like a rock ensemble class. I just took it because I thought it was going to be an easy A, which it was. And uh, we ended up doing the song Roulette as one of the songs we had to do just because a lot of us really liked that song. It was I don't think it was ever a single or anything, but it was just a good rock and heavy song. Um, and the She Don't Know Me, which was uh, I think they released that as a single as well. Um, it was a good song, kind of a, I don't want to say it was a ballad, but it was ballad -y. it was a more mellow song. Uh, song number four, Shot Through the Heart, good song, it's a good rocker, it's got, uh, you know, the, not, not a really slow intro, but it's got, you know, the start and stop type uh, thing going on with the guitar and the vocals. Uh, good song, catchy. Actually, there was another band I had actually heard do this at one time, who's can't think of the name of it right off the top of my head now if there was another band out there that I can't remember the name of the band actually that did the song they did it 
pretty well. Um, so I mean, there's obviously other people out there that are influenced by uh, you know, Bon Jovi at this point in time too. Um, song number five is Love Lies, which it's uh, it's kind of an eh song. Yeah, not the greatest. It was okay. I mean, it, I'd let it play. I wouldn't skip over it or anything, but it didn't really have any you know great impact on me anyway. Um, and then we go to song, well, I guess it would be flip side on, on the, the record. It would have been song number one on the second side is Breakout, which is, I don't know, that's a tough contender too. Breakout was a good song. It might be my in the running for my favorite you know, up against Roulette. But Breakout, great song. Um, maybe should have done that one, The Rockin' Tumbles too. That was a real good one. Um, Burning for Love was the next song on that. It was a, also another good song, just a straight ahead rocker. Uh, comeback is where they get, I don't know, a little off track, I think. Not the, it's not a horrible song, but it's just, you know, just another one of those ant songs. And then Get Ready is kind of, uh, I don't know, like the party song on the album. It uh, was, it had a little slight touch of that uh, New Jersey feel to it that a lot of those bands had there. And of course, he's from Jersey, you know. And, had a lot of that uh, Springsteen influence, which didn't really show a lot on this album. I do have to say, it didn't really show that much on this one. It in his later days, you know, when they got into the Keep the Faith and Beyond, he's shown more of his Springsteen influence, I think, since then than he actually did in his earlier days. Um, that's all it was, just nine songs on that uh, first one. And then let's go on to uh, Slippery One Wet. Now, I don't know if anybody knows the story about this, but they're up in Vancouver recording this one. And they had the pink album cover of the girl and the, the wet t-shirt. And at the last second, they hated it and decided to uh, change the album cover. And it was just a, a piece of plastic they sprayed with water. And John wrote Slippery and Wet on the the piece of plastic. And that's what they used for the album cover. And I say it's uh, kind of one of those iconic album covers. It's just one of those ones you see it and you just brings back memories. It's a really memorable album cover. Um, good sounding album was where they got uh, was it Bruce Fairburn I actually don't remember if it was Bruce Fairburn uh, they got the you know the professional producer in to produce this album it was supposed to be the record company going to make them huge and did they also got uh, together with Desmond Child he had just you know gotten done writing with a couple other you know other bands Kiss and I think it was uh I believe it was Aerosmith was before this one, maybe, I don't know. You have to check my facts on that one too. But anyway, he was uh, you know, becoming known as a songwriter, you know, the guy to go to to help uh, you know, bump up the careers and get some songs on the radio and he did his job. I mean he re- he's the one that came in with uh, you know, Living on a Prayer was the, the huge song off this album that was uh, had a lot to do with Desmond. But anyway, <clears throat> let's get into it. Uh, Let It Rock is this the song that leads this album off. Um, Great, great opening song. Good guitars. Great, catchy. Uh, I, I mean, I love that song. Actually, it's it's that could have been a single as well. A really good song. Um, and then right into "You Give Love a Bad Name," which is one of those uh, one starts with the just the vocal. So it's one of these that could probably go in the top ten songs of with just a vocal opening, big you know group harmony vocal. Um, been in a band I played that song in a band um, love it it's a fun song to play and to uh, Living on a Prayer is the next one also did that one played that one in a few different bands um, obviously everybody's heard that song that's the one where they made the big video and the big hair on MTV and kind of led the way and how videos should be done um, was it Wayne Isham or Isham I don't know how you actually pronounce the name I think directed that one made it like a concert looking Video, he was flying around on ropes and all kinds of stuff. It was still, you know, a great video. Um, a little big influence on a lot of bands. Um, next song is Social Disease. Um, decent song. Um, I think it was Love is a Social Disease. It's kind of like the whole, you know, catch to that. I don't know exactly what they were trying to say in a song. It's a decent song. It's kind of another one that you just kind of didn't pay a whole lot of attention to, but it wasn't, uh, didn't stand up to the other first three, that's for sure. Um, and then, of course, then it's surrounded by Wanted Dead or Live, be the closing song on that side. <clears throat> Obviously, another huge song. They're also the ones that took this 
they totally at least take credit for it. And I actually remember watching the performance they did on the MTV Music Wars. It was just John and Richie playing it acoustically. And that kind of kick-started the whole unplug thing. I know there's different variations of that story, but I kind of remember it being that way, too. You know, seeing that first, and then the Unplug series came afterwards. And, um, you know, it was... Uh, I mean, still bands still do it to this day. They take, you know, I was a Def Leppard uh, on their more recent tour that I just watched a video of them out uh, doing a whole little set in the middle of their concert with the, the acoustic thing going. So, I mean, bands are still doing it. Huge. These guys are a big influence. Uh, side 2, Raise Your Hands. Another great song, good rocker. That could have been a, you know, the opening track as well. It's one of those ones that just kind of gets you up and uh, just gets you moving. It's a good rock song. Um, Without Love is uh, the next song on that side. Because yes, this is back in the cassette days. <clears throat> Another good song. Um, it, it's probably better than the Social Disease, but it's still kind of a filler type song. But it, it was it was a good song. Um, I Die for You. Um, probably in the same vein. They're all good songs, you know. The, the Without Love and I Die for You, good songs. Um, not like he's huge. I mean, when you're comparing him to like, you know, You Give Love a Bad Name and Living on a Prayer. Obviously, they're not huge like that, but they're still good, solid rock songs. And then Never Say Goodbye is the next one on there. That's, you know, the, the ballad, the big ballad of the album. Actually, I remember doing this song in a band as well. Way back. Wow. Back in like the late 80, 88, 89. I was in a band. We did that song. Good good track. Um, you know, everybody grabbed their girl and go out on the dance floor and dance to that one. And then ends with Wild in the Streets. Actually, another, another really good song. Um, solid. I mean, there's really not a clunker on uh, Slippery When Wet. I mean, you can... If you're taking the the ones you know like social disease and even without love or one of those songs he, they're still good songs i don't i don't care you know <laughs> they're still good songs There's a couple little lesser um well-written ones on the first uh first disc but you know that's they're a new band at that point in time too the sound uh you can hear on john's voice he's still learning kind of how to sing on the first album but it's got that nice raw feel to it this is actually going to be a tough one to pick um what to do i mean this band was just a huge influence on a lot of people um just got into the rock and roll hall of fame i mean still around i mean richie's not with the band anymore but he's out doing his own thing actually his solo stuff is really good if you ever get a chance to pick up a richie sambora solo album that dude can sing he can play guitar good songs you can hear the influence he had on on Bon Jovi, even the one he just did with Orianti there, that's a, I picked that one up, it's, that's a great disc too, it's it's a fun disc, it's got a, his blues influence, it's got a little bit of funk and some other cool stuff in there, I guess they're not together anymore, so I don't expect any more albums from them, but you know, if you get a chance, give, a, give that one a listen too, uh, the more recent Bon Jovi stuff, I didn't really care for the, the last two, um, got a couple good songs here and there, but... I don't know. I'm hoping for a Richie uh, John reunion someday. I think those two together really did some some good music. But anyway, back to the chore at hand here. I guess picking picking one. Um, I'm gonna have to go with Slippery One Wet. I know it seems like the obvious choice, but I think it's the better album. I think yeah, the self-titled one like influenced me more. But that's one that got me hooked into listening to it. They almost lost me with 7800 Degrees, so they brought me back with with uh, Slippery When Wet, and of course, you know, they went on to do New Jersey, and which was another great album. I could probably do one between New Jersey and uh, Keep the Faith, too, because Keep the Faith, is they really switched directions there as well. So, I mean, there's, maybe I'll do another one with those two and see what we come up with and do like a showdown, best Bon Jovi album. I don't know, we'll see. See how this goes. I'm just doing it for fun, you know, like I always say. This is just to uh, keep us talking about these bands, not that we really have to talk about Bon Jovi, but they were a huge influence on me, so... Had to pick them. Um, you know, if you want to check out any of my songs, check out you know Roger Christopherson's YouTube channel. I got a Bandcamp. You got to pick here, listen to my tunes on iTunes and Spotify. If you just want to give them a listen and check stuff out, um, appreciate it. I mean, I love you guys listening to my stuff. I mean, it's great to be out, be able to do this and uh, make music and still have fun talking about music. So, till next time, see you guys. Thanks. <laughs>